In this problem, we're trying to figure out what the EMF and the direction of the induced current would be on this loop of wire if it was sitting in these different magnetic fields. And the first thing we probably want to do is figure out what the direction of those magnetic fields are. So in the K direction, that would be coming out of the page like this. And so we'd have three different fields coming out like that. And in the J direction, it'd just be pointing this direction. And for the I direction, that would be this way. So now we kind of know what the direction of those fields are. We've got this area being placed inside of it. And we're just trying to figure out what the EMF is. So the EMF for every case is essentially going to be negative D over DT, and then we're going to have the uh, flux of magnetic flux there. But um, we're asked for the magnitude, so let's just ignore that negative sign. Uh, so let's try to set up the flux equation for all of these. We'll start with the first one here. Um, so we'll go something like this, and it's just going to be the integral of the B, which is this, and just put that in there, so 7.1 e to negative 2y, and then there's also going to be the, um, well, I'll put, I'll put the original equation here, so it'd be something like this, integral of B dot dA, so just keep that in mind, so we're dotting it with the dA, now dA in this case is just going to be uh, dx dy, so we're going to use that for what we put in here, and, uh, dx and dy. And when we dot it, it's just going to be cosine of theta. Now, in this case, the cosine of theta between the magnetic field, which is this thing, and the area normal, which is that thing, is going to be zero. So cosine of zero is, uh, is, is one. So we can kind of get rid of the cosine for that one um, in all three of these cases. But over here, uh, now we have this. But the EMF is supposed to be the the derivative, the time derivative of this. And if we were to t try to take the time derivative of that, uh, there is no t, therefore the derivative would be zero. And therefore, in this case, the emf would be zero because there's no t's here. So we'll just take the derivative of that and um, that would just be zero. So so in the first one, it's zero and you know, the direction would be none. Now, in the second one, we have uh, this one. So let's try to set up the, the integral again like this, we'll have 6.2 e to negative 2 t here, and then there's going to be the dx dy, and then a cosine is going to be just 1, so we'll get rid of that. But for here, what we're going to, what we're going to have to do next is take this and take the time derivative of that. So we'll do, um, we'll basically just go d over t, like this, d over dt, and then we can essentially just drop this t. So the EMF is going to be the answer to this integral, uh, which would be 6.2 e to negative 2 integral of dx dy, which is technically a double integral. Um, but uh, so if, you, if you just integrate that, it's just, a, it's just the area here. So let's try to do that real quick. Um, that would be 42.9 negative 2 times 25.9 negative 2. And then you multiply that by 6.2, negative 2. And uh, so in this particular case, the EMF is 6.89. And then that would be millivolts. All right, so on to the next one. This would be setting it up equals uh, 8.05, negative 2, yt. Then we have the dx dy. This is still cosine of not, uh, 0, which is one so that's kind of gone um now when we take the the derivative here so we're going to take the derivative next um we can kind of switch this to the e right and then e equals the derivative of what have we had here it's a little bit sloppy but let's try this one more time so get the derivative of this integral and because it's a time derivative, we'll just basically drop that t, and we're left with this integral here. So, if we integrate, um, if we were to integrate, like a double integral here of uh, y and then uh, dy dx here, I mean, essentially, this dx thing um, just turns into an x, so, you know, we can kind of pull that out in the end. You're kind of going to get 8.05 
and then there's an x there, and then there's an integral of y dy, so you can kind of try doing that, um, and uh, that'd be y squared over 2 times whatever you get over here. So the x's and the y's are basically going to be these things, because we're going to be integrating um, over the distance from uh, 0 to... Whatever the y was, was uh, 42.9, or no, the y is supposed to be 25.9, so it's 25.9, because that's the width. So 25.9 would essentially go here, and you get a zero there, and try to integrate that. But essentially, you'll get 8.05 times, and I think it's negative 2, 8.05, negative 2. And then we're going to multiply that by the x, which was 42.9 negative 2 there, and then we're going to have that integral, which is going to be 25.9 negative 2 squared, and you divide that by the 2 there. And so we'll get the next one, which is the EMF being equal to 1.16 millivolts. And then we'll get to the next one here, but we can solve these ones pretty quickly because as soon as we try to do the flux equation here uh you know your integral of b and then a and then you've got your cosine um the cosine between this direction and the normal remember that the normal is like this and now we're trying to uh trying to dot a j direction vector like the k direction vector would be this way on the cosine of 90 degrees is going to be equal to zero. And so in this case, and also in this case, or the, and the fields are going to be pointing in those directions. Both of these have the same answer as we had at the beginning, where this would be just none, because those are not pointing in the proper directions. So we basically got two answers here for these guys, and uh, it was a little bit difficult to do these, but yeah, it's kind of interesting.